Hello and welcome back to Isip Nayan. For today's video, we are going to discuss more word problems involving constant, linear, and piecewise functions. But before we proceed, do not forget to hit like and subscribe so that you'll get notified once we upload new videos. The learning objectives for this video are the following. First, you should be able to construct mathematical models and solve word problems involving constant, linear, and piecewise functions. We first define what mathematical models are and basically, we construct mathematical models to formulate general formulas that will be applicable in certain scenarios or tests. Let's now have examples on applications involving constant functions. But before that, please take note that for you to be able to verify that a certain scenario or case is involving constant function, you need to identify words synonymous to constant. So you can pause this video for a while, then think of words having the same meaning as constant. We proceed to example number one. The standard size of a basketball court in NBA is 4,700 square feet. Now, in this given example, you need to identify the keyword which is synonymous to constant. Can you identify it? If you have identified standard then you are correct standard is synonymous to constant because standard means true to all so to represent this one as a constant function we can write it this way f of x equals 4700 now in creating the constant function you need not include the unit of measurement so we are only interested in writing the constant so the symbol f of x here can be changed as y or any other letters aside from but to follow the function notation we use f of x. So the answer to this one is f of x equals 4,700. Next example, we have the passing rate of any test in SBU is 50% of the total. Now this is an example of a constant function because there is a keyword here, any test. So meaning it is true to all or this is something factual and it is synonymous to constant. If it is true for any test, then it is true to all. It will not change. So to represent this sentence as a constant function, you can write it as r of x equals 50. Now this time, I use a different alphabet in denoting the function symbol. And again, we disregard the unit of measurement, which is in terms of percent. Another example we have here, a year consists of 12 months. You may notice in this example that there are really no explicit keywords you can see from the sentence, but the this sentence expresses something factual and we all know that it is true that a year consists of 12 months this statement will not change therefore we can verify that we can represent it as a constant function now we can write it this way m of x is equal to 12 this time i use the alphabet m or the letter m to represent the function number of months moving on construct a function that represents the number of days in the month of november again there are no explicit keywords words you can see here that are synonymous to constant but we know that the number of days in november is constant and it's not changing so we can represent this one as a function d of x equals 30. moving on let's now have examples solving word problems involving linear function but before that we need to practice how to transform given phrases to mathematical expressions so we have here the statement a number times 8 divided by 2. It's very important that you know how to transform phrases to mathematical expressions. So we represent this as n, that's the number, times 8 divided by 2. So we can write it in this way or there are other various ways to write this. It can also be written as 8n divided by 2 or as a fraction 8n over 2. Aside from n, you can also use other variables. Another example, a number squared plus 5. So a number can be represented again as a variable then square it then you add the 5 again you can also use other variables aside from n so it can be written as x squared plus 5 moving on let's now have some realistic examples Sheila sells 5 lemonade per day so we want to represent this one as a mathematical expression and we're talking here about the sales of Sheila 5 lemonade per day so if you can see the word per that is associated to the operation multiplication so meaning to know the sales of Sheila for the succeeding days we simply multiply 5 by the number of day because day can be represented as a variable so to transform this phrase into a mathematical expression we can write it as 5x 
X. Per 5X pertains to selling 5 lemonade glasses per day. Another example, Marvin gains 1,000 subscribers per vlog. He initially has 500 subscribers. Now, we can represent this one as a mathematical expression by analyzing the keyword. So, there is a phrase here, gains 1,000 per vlog, 1,000 subscribers per, per vlog. So, we can represent it as 1,000 X. And 1,000 X means it is the representation that there is a gain of 1,000 subscribers. Aside from that, the second sentence states that in he initially has 500 subscribers. So, uh, that will be a constant plus 500 because initial means it's the starting number of subscribers or it can also be pertained to as the constant. So, aside from 1,000 X, we need to add 500 so that we can include the initial number of subscribers. Okay, here are some reminders before you construct uh, linear functions. You need to be familiar with dependent and independent variable. So, when we say dependent variable, it is the one associated with the Y variable and the given a word problem, you will identify that it is the dependent variable when it is the variable that we are looking for or it is the total we are solving for. How about the independent variable? Independent variable is associated with the X variable. So, the keyword may be this is the value that uh, we need to substitute to get a result. Example, a faucet dripping at a constant rate fills a test tube with 0.4 cubic centimeters of water every minute. Determine the equation that represents the relationship between the volume of the test tube being filled per minute. So we are asked here to determine an equation that represents the relationship between the volume of test tube being filled per minute. So given that phrase, will be identified the dependent and independent variable. Let's start with the dependent variable. Again, the keyword is total. What is the totality we're looking for? So basically, if you understand this word problem, Y or the total will be pertaining to the volume of water in the test tube. How about the independent variable? What variable will affect the total volume of water? So the total volume of water will be filled. So the X variable will be the minute because per minute, there will be additional volume to the test tube. So to construct the equation, it can simply be pertained to as y equals the additional rate per minute which is highlighted in this part of the sentence 0 0.4 cubic centimeters every minute. So 0 0.4 cubic centimeters would be the additional volume of water per minute. So we can represent that one as a mathematical expression 0 0.4 times x. Again, we simply disregard the unit of measurement. Therefore, this scenario can be represented as a function where y is the total volume and 0.4x represent that every minute there will be additional volume of 0.4 cubic centimeters. So to write it in correct function notation, we can write y as f of x equals 0.4x. Next example, a high school had a total of 1,200 students enrolled in 2003 and 1,500 in 2006. If the student population, P of T, grows as a linear function of time T, where T is the number of years after 2003, find a linear function that relates the student population to the time T. Now, we can verify that this word problem will be leading us to a linear function because it's stated here that we should be dealing with a linear function and the variables would be population and the time in terms of t. So the dependent variable or the total that we are looking for in this particular word problem is represented as p of t. So y will be denoted instead as p of t and we are looking for the total student population. How about the independent variable? The independent variable is denoted by the other variable of course which is the time and it is represented as t. So it's stated here that time should be represented as t and it pertains to the number of years after 2003. So x will be written as t instead and t represents the time or the number of years after 2003. So we need to take note that the starting year given in this word problem is at the year 2003. So before we construct the equation, we need to analyze the word problem. Before we write anything on the right hand side of p of t, we analyze the given in the word problem. So we are comparing here the population and time. So let's identify the trend of the increase of student population from 2003 until 
the given 2006. So let's try to construct a table with two variables, population error year or time. So we started with year 2003 and there are 1,200 students enrolled initially, which is on this part of the word problem. 1,200 students are enrolled in 2003 and there is where we found it. Another given is in 2006, there are 1,500 students. So it's helpful that we are going to write the, this information as well. So in the year 2006, there are 1,500 students. You notice there will be interval in between 2003 and 2006. And six, that will be years 2004 and 2005. And we just simply want to assume how many students are being added per year. From 1,200 to 1,500, we can assume that there will be an increase of 100 students per year. So from 2003 to 2004, we assume that there will be 1,300 students, then so on, adding 100 additional students per year until we achieve 1,500 students for 2006. So in analyzing the trend of the growth in student population, we can assume that there are additional 100 students per year. So to construct now the equation, we can write the independent variable as 100 times t, which is the number of years after 2003. So basically, every year, there is additional 100 students. Now, we need to take note that we have an initial starting number of students on year 2003 with 1,200. And that will be pertained to as the initial population. So definitely, this will be represented as a constant because it's the starting population. So the equation or the function to represent this word problem is p of t equals 100t plus 1200. Let's now try to apply the function that we have solved in this word problem. So we pertain to the same problem but this time we'll be answering this question how many students will be enrolled in 2010. So we refer back to the function that we have constructed just a while ago, p of t equals 100t plus 1200. Now, this will be our basis to answer the question. Take note that we are asked how many students will there be in 2010. So, 2010 will be our basis to identify the time that we are going to substitute to evaluate the function. But take note that we will not substitute 2010 or 2010. We want to know the time elapsed from 2003 until 2010. So we start by 2003. How many years have passed until 2010? So that will be 2004, 2005, until of course 2009. And the interval of the year would be 2004 will be the first, first year, 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, until 2010, which is seventh year. So in 2010, seven years have passed starting from 2003. So the value of t that we are going to substitute to evaluate the this function is 7. So substituting the value of 7 will get p of 7 equals 100 times the value of t which is 7 plus 1200. Simplifying the expression, it will be 700 plus 1200 or the sum is 1,900. So to answer the question, 1,900 students will be enrolled in 2010. So this is how you apply the mathematical model in predicting future numerical values. Another example for linear function, the pollution level in the center of a city at 6 a.m. is 30 parts per million and it grows in a linear fashion by 25 parts per million every hour. If y is pollution and t is the time elapsed after 6 a.m., determine the equation that relates y with t. Now we can verify that this word problem is involving a linear function because of the phrase linear fashion. So basically, it is an example of a linear function. Now we want to identify the variables and it is stated here that y is the pollution and t is the time elapsed after 6 a.m. So basically, we are talking about the pollution and the time. To identify the dependent variable, we simply need to take note which variable are we getting the total of. And that will be y is equal to the total pollution or the total pollution level. And what factors will affect the total pollution level? That is the independent variable. And we know that through time, whereas time passed by, t or the x or the time will greatly affect the total pollution level. So t is the time elapsed after 
6 a.m. After that time, pollution is being accumulated. So it's best to first analyze and observe the trend given the information. We can again construct a table comparing the pollution level and the time. So just like the previous example, we have a starting point, this time a starting time at 6 a.m. and there are initially 30 parts per million or the pollution level is 30 parts per million. Then we try to analyze what will be the pollution level at 7, 8, 9, 10 a.m. So that will know the trend. So basically it is stated in the word problem that it grows or the pollution level grows 25 parts per million every hour. Therefore, every hour, there will be additional 25. So from 6 to 7, 7 to 8, 8 to 9, 9 to 10, and so on, there will be additional 25 parts per million. So after an hour, starting at 6 a.m., that will be 30 plus 25, there will now be 55 parts per million. From 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., there will be 80 parts per million. From 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., additional again 25 that will be 105 parts per million and lastly from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. 130 parts per million so technically there will be an additional 25 parts per million per hour and that we can include in the mathematical model that we're going to construct so in this analysis we conclude that there is an additional 25 parts per million per hour and that will be related to the time or the independent variable. Thus, to construct the function, we use the appropriate uh, variables given. So let's designate uh, the pollution level as y equals. Uh, we're talking here about 25 parts mil per million added per hour or for the time, variable time t. And uh, just like in the previous example, since there is a starting point, uh, 30 parts per million at 6 a.m., then we will also include that in the equation. So 30 will be the starting pollution level. So since it's a starting point, then it will be represented as a constant. Therefore, we can write uh, the function as y of t equals uh, 25t plus uh, 30. And this is the answer to the word problem. We are now tasked to solve for the pollution level at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So we pertain to the function we constructed a while ago, y of t equals 25t plus 30. Now we want to know the pollution level at 4 o'clock. So again, just like the previous example, let's count how many hours have passed from 6 a.m. until to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, which is 4 p.m. Okay, so I am listening here from 6 a.m. until 4 p.m. 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So basically, from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m., the time is 10 hours. So we are not going to substitute 4 because that's a time. We need to know the number of hours, which is 10. So to evaluate the function, that will be y of 10 equals 25 times 10 plus 30. Simplifying the expression, we'll get 22, 25 times 10, which is 250 plus 30. The result is 280. So the answer to this question is the pollution level at 4 o'clock is 280 parts per million or ppm. Let's now discuss word problems involving piecewise function. But before that, take note that given a word problem, you need first to identify identify how many functions will be represented based on the word problem because piecewise function is a combination of functions. Therefore, there should be statements in the word problem wherein it will help us construct at least two functions. Then after that, check for restrictions in terms of the domain. First example, Maria rides a jeepney to go to the market which is 14 kilometers away from her house. The fare rate for the jeepney ride is 8 pesos for the first 4 kilometers and additional 140 for every kilometer or a fraction of it thereafter. Write the mathematical model that can be drawn given the situation. So definitely this will be a piecewise function. Let's identify how many functions can we form given the statements in the word problem. So let's analyze the first sentence. There's nothing we can get there because that's an information. For the second sentence, the fare rate for the jeepney is 8 pesos for the first 4 kilometers. And that can be represented as a function later on. Another one, an additional 140 for every kilometer or a fraction thereafter. 1.40 rather. That can be another function. So definitely, we can construct two functions given this word problem. The first function is the one in yellow highlight. The second one in the green highlight. So the first function will be the one representing the fare rate for the jeepney ride, which is 8 pesos for the first 4 kilometers. When we say fare rate, this can also be pertained as the basic fare 
or the standard rate. And this is what you're going to pay for the first to 4 kilometers. So when we say fare rate, this is constant. It will not change until the first 4 kilometers. So we can represent it as a constant function f of x equals 8. Now for the restriction, we need to take note that this is only applicable for the first 4 kilometers. Therefore, x should be greater than or equal to 0 but less than or equal to 4. This so the restriction because uh, this rate will only work if you travel from 0 km until 4 km. Hence, the restriction will help you identify what function will you use in terms of the kilometers traveled. Second function will be representing the additional 1.40 peso for every kilometer or a fraction of it thereafter. So, what if you traveled more than 4 kilometers? What will be the value? So, basically, we are simply going to add the 1.40 peso per additional kilometer. Now, this can be represented as a linear function. So, that will be f of x equals the base rate which is 8 peso that will be a constant plus there will be additional 1.40 kilometers that can be represented as 1.40 times the value more than 4 can be represented as x and since it's an excess of 4 kilometers we should subtract 4 and that will be the linear function this portion of the function will be the rate or the additional rate that we are going to include on the base fare which is 8 pesos in other words it will be the additional rate in excess of 4 kilometers now for the restriction this will only be applied when you travel more than 4 so x is greater than 4 now to construct the piecewise function we simply combine the function. So we use the mathematical function notation f of x equals braces, curly brace. The first function is a constant function 8 and the restriction is that x should be greater than or equal to 0 but less than or equal to 4. The second function is 8 plus 1.40 times x minus 4 where x should be greater than 4. So we have here two functions. And definitely, it is the one representing a piecewise function. Moving on to apply the piecewise function, let's answer the second question. How much will she pay when she reach the market? Now, we need to take note what is the distance between her house and the, the market. And it's here in the word problem, it's 14 kilometers. So the market is 14 kilometers away from her house. We will now use the piecewise function we have constructed a while ago. Now, we are going to substitute the, the value of 14 kilometers or simply 14 to evaluate the function. So we are going to input 14 as x, we're solving for f of 14, and then we need to take note which among the given function will 14 fall given the restriction. So we have two options, and basically we use the second one because 14 is indeed greater than 4. So if we check the inequality, we substitute x as 14, that will be 14 greater than 4. And the inequality is satisfied. Therefore, we use the second restriction. Take note that if we substitute 14 on the first restriction, that will be 14 is greater than or equal to 0, but it's not less than 4. So definitely, it's wrong. Hence, we use the second function or the linear one. Then we simply substitute. Take note that we are only going to use the function. 8 plus 1.4 times x minus 4. So let's now substitute copy 8 plus 1.4. Then x will be substituted as 14. So instead of simply writing x, the substituted value is 14. Then copy minus 4. Afterwards, you simplify. That will be 8 plus 1.4 times 14 minus 4 is 10. Simplifying further will give us 8 plus 14. Then the sum is 22. So to answer the question, Maria will pay 22 pesos. Another example for piecewise function, Jacob was paid an hourly wage of 600 for 30 hours per week and an additional hourly wage of 200 pesos for more than 30 hours. This will be a piecewise function if we'll be able to identify functions to be constructed that is more than one. So let's see how many functions can we form here. First would be an hourly wage of 600 pesos for 30 hours per week. The other one would be the additional hourly wage of 200 pesos for more than 30 hours. And this problem is somehow aligned to the previous one. So definitely, the first function is labeled on the yellow highlights, the second one on the green ones. The first function is a constant function. Why? Because it is pertaining to the hourly wage of 600 for 30 hours per week. That is the basic pay. So we can construct this as a constant function with a given restriction described in the 
phrase. So f of x is equal to 2, 600, wherein x should be greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 30. The second function is a linear function. If we compare it to the previous word problem, they are somehow the same. So there will be additional 200 pesos if Jacob worked more than 30 hours with that given specific week. Now, to construct the linear function, that will be f of x equals, we write the basic pay, 600, plus the excess of 30 hours, which will be paid 200 pesos. Then, x will be representing the additional or excess of 30 hours minus 30, where x should be greater than 30. So, to write the function, that will be using curly braces. The first one is 600, when x is greater than or equal to 0, or less than or equal to 30. The other one is 600, plus 200 times x minus 30, where x should be greater than 30. Let's now use the same word problem to answer the question, what will be Jacob's salary if he works 40 hours in a week? So, we will be referring to the function that we constructed a while ago, and this is the function we just constructed a while ago. Basically, we need to evaluate the function in such a way that we're going to substitute 40 as the value of x because we want to know Jacob's salary if he works 40 hours in a week. Now, evaluating the function will lead us to f of 40 equals, again, we assess which among the given domain restriction will 40 Fall. So let's check the first one. X is greater than or equal to 0 but less than or equal to 30. The other one is X is greater than 30. Definitely, 40 will fall within this inequality because when we substitute 40, it is indeed greater than 30. However, if we substitute 40 to the previous or the first restriction, the inequality will not be satisfied because 40 is not less than or equal to 30. Therefore, we use the second function. 600 plus 200 times x minus 30 because this is the restriction where 40 falls. So substitute 600 plus 200 times x will be substituted as 40 minus 30. Then after that, we simply need to simplify the equation. So that's 600 plus 200 times 40 minus 30 is 10. Simplifying further will give us 600 plus 2000. Then the sum is 2,600. Therefore, to answer the question, we can say that Jacob's salary, if he worked 40 hours in a week, would be 2,600 pesos. And that is another way where we can predict possible numerical values or outcome using constructing of mathematical models. So the answer is 2,600 pesos. So to conclude this video, take note that in solving constant function, take note of the keywords synonymous to constant. In solving linear functions, identify the dependent and independent variables. In solving piecewise functions, identify how many functions can be constructed based on the word problem, then check for the restriction. And that is all for this video. I hope the learning objectives were achieved and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye!